Hannah Einbinder stars in season two of Hacks on HBO Max. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Uh, Hannah, such a pleasure to talk with you today as helicopters uh, <laughs> go by. Um, I wanted to start by looking at where Hacks left off in the end of season one. Uh, that finale is such a roller coaster for your character. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, uh, how does it feel to play those highs and lows? Is it, I'm sure it's fun and also challenging. So take us back to, you know, kind of everywhere your character has been and how Ava's feeling at the start of season two. Yeah, uh, thank you uh, for having me. Um, really excited. Uh, yeah, no, um, the highs and lows are um, kind of where I live, you know, as Ava. She's, she's certainly like, you know, as much as she, her like kind of demeanor is this like dry, flat sort of delivery vibe with her, her comedy, um, so the events in her life are certainly um, intense. Uh, so it, it's interesting getting to play that. I certainly push myself as an actor and my lovely director, Lucia Aniello, um, guides me in a beautiful way. Uh, to get there. I, I don't know if you can tell by my sort of voice and everything about me, I kind of keep it in this zone, uh, just sort of as a person. And so getting up there and getting down there um, is, a, is an interesting experience. It's not something that I really do in my everyday life. I kind of keep it chill. That's kind of my vibe as a person. So um, as an actor, going in those places, in those directions has been really exciting and a challenge um, absolutely, but one I'm excited by. Um, and yeah, when we when we sort of we pick up where right where we leave off. Season two picks up right in 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 the plane with Deborah and Ava. Ava's freaking freaking hard, and uh, she um, yeah. I mean that moment. I remember the day we shot that. That was um, it was very intense because I have to really um, work myself up to get um, to that sort of like panic and fear. Um, and it's it's a layered experience because, you know, there's so much going on for Ava. Um, the fear of like, finally like losing Deborah, who means everything to her, her job. This is the last chance she had. Um, she's just lost her dad. Like everything is collapsing, everything, everything, everything. And so, it certainly was intense, but um, yeah, I, I hope we pulled it off. Oh, no question. Um, and you've touched on so many of the things I wanna ask you about, um, but before we get to some of those specifics, you know, just the arc of season two is Deborah and Ava going on the road to workshop new material uh, for this new act. So I have a few questions for you on that. The first is as a stand-up yourself, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've hit the road kind of cross country the way Deborah is doing, but you know, when you're workshopping material, you know, what is your process like and how does it kind of mirror or echo, you know, what Deborah and Ava are doing on screen this season? Yeah, um, yes, I, I have certainly hit the road. I'm about to hit the road again, hannahinbiter.com slash shows for tickets. And um, I'm sorry, David, I had to do it. I had no, it's to do it, David. So, so appropriate, so appropriate. <laughs> uh, shameless. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's, I would say that it's it's true to life. Um, what De what Deborah and Ava are doing is, I mean, I don't have a, a writer, but um, I am the writer. But uh, it's the exact thing that I do. Um, you go on stage, you have a, basically the biggest version of a joke. It kind of gets cut down and down and down and down and down based on what is actually working. You're reworking things, little lines, periods, commas, like every little tiny piece of minutia. And the only way to know whether something is good or not is to test it. And so they're going everywhere. They need second, third, fourth opinions. You know, it really is a, a, a big sort of slag. It really is like a grueling um, process. Uh, and, but it's, it's the best because it's like solving one long, big, weird verbal puzzle. Um, and the way that, you know, uh, the, a lot of the writers on Hacks and certainly the creators have a background in performing. Um, they've all done comedy live on stage and so they know, you know, intimately what, what it entails. Um, so yeah, I would say it's absolutely true to life and certainly true to my experience of doing comedy on the road. 
Yeah, we see some truly bizarre and hilarious situations on the road for Deborah and for Ava. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you if you're willing to share any particularly good horror stories of your time on the road as a stand-up, or just a memorable, it doesn't have to be something, you know, particularly bad, but just a memorable experience um, on the road. You know, um, I've, you know, it's, I'll tell you two. Um, one is just like, imagine me sort of in like a Holiday Inn Express adjacent establishment, Valentine's Day, just, you know, staring at like a cottage cheese ceiling, um, you know, crying. Like, so there's one for you. That's just the reality of the road. <laughs> uh, and um, the other is, I mean, I've just been like, you know, you just get heckled. Like, I, I, I remember there was this one time where I said something, like I was getting towards the end of my act and I said, um, you know, uh, something along the lines of like, uh, this is where I leave you or, you know, some, some little like, you know, saucy outro. And a man shouted from the audience, thank God. So, you know, like you just, I uh, I cracked my human shell and was reborn that day. It just wears you down. It just wears you down. But uh, you rise from the ashes, you know, like the phoenix. So that's kind of, those are my two little sampler platters for you of what it's like out there. And then it's also very fun and good, but those are kind of yeah. the lows. So nothing as, you know, horrendous <laughs> as some of the things that Deborah experiences, but, um... If you haven't, you know, this will be this will air before season two. So, you know, look forward to some of the bizarre um, <laughs> situations that that they get themselves into. Um, I yeah. do want to ask you about uh, your dynamic with De Ava's dynamic with Deborah, because their relationship, you know, if you can guess from where season one ends is even more complex and complicated this year. Um, so I just wanted to ask you a few questions on that. Number one. Working with Gene Smart, you've had now a year to kind of build your rapport and, you know, watching like your dedication to Gene at the uh, Walk of Fame, like, you know, you can tell the relationship is so rich. So how do you kind of translate your rapport off screen to this really complicated and kind of contentious, but also, you know, loving relationship on screen because it's so rich? Oh, well, thank you. Um, I do love that, that gal. Um... And I would say that, you know, it's all on the page, like our writers have created a beautiful world for us. Um, and the truth is, like, from the moment I met her, we were locked into that dynamic, it just was instant. And so um, there's really no effort to trans, you know, translate it, it just, you know, we work with the material and, and give the scene what it what what it asks for. Um, and, you know, um, when we are having fun and when the characters are having fun, then we just put, you know, we let that fly. But there are moments where it's more contentious and that's not what, that is a strike. Like we don't have that. We don't fight. <laughs> I just say, yes, miss. And we, cause I know what's up and Jean is right. Most of the time, I would say always because she can Ooh. see this and um, <laughs> nah, just joshing, but yeah. So um, it's pretty, natural. Yeah, some of my favorite scenes from the first season and continuing into this season uh, are watching Deborah and Ava workshop material kind of perfect and develop a punchline. They're yeah. so, in, I mean, they're so entertaining, but also so revealing about, you know, kind of the thought process. So I'm just wondering, you know, what do you think of those scenes when you're doing them? And do you as a writer yourself ever like, you know, throw, you know, throw your own kind of punchline or, or, or spin on the material? Um, you know, either to surprise Jean or, you know, you can think of a joke that would really work about, you know, her, her business manager or, or something. I mean, yeah, we, the, the two of us will throw things in just if Lucia is like, okay, go for it guys. Like let her, <laughs> let her rip. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it is, a uh, it's something that, um, is very fun, even though it's all there and it's not, you know, we are reading, you know, we are reciting lines, um. It, it is something that is still fun to build on because it's it mirrors our sort of real real life interactions and the reality of anyone who's riffing, you know, which Gina and I absolutely do on and off screen. So it's it's a delight. 
Yeah, it is also season two, an emotional season for Ava. Um, you know, her father has just passed uh, somewhat unexpectedly. Um, she didn't get to really say goodbye. And we kind of see her process uh, of grief and, and loss in the season. How much of that kind of storyline, I mean, number one, it gives you such great material to play. I mean, it comes across so beautifully, but also, you know, how much do you think that loss is really, you know, affecting everything that Ava does this, this season? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's a a sort of constant through line, but I, I think that Ava is someone whose grief does not always manifest in just like sitting in sadness and sorrow. I think she's like like Deborah, she's like, keep going, work through it, you know. So that's that's certainly something where she's, you know, going moving on with her life but it's it's a constant and we see you know moments where it comes out certainly but um and it's certainly like a a, a through line of her dealing with her dad um but yeah i think like just sort of like a foundational element of her as a character especially you know this is again where deborah and ava are similar it's just they they kind of push through um the curveballs thrown by life yeah um, and before I let you go, just a question on your Emmy nomination from last year, a belated congratulations on, on that. Um, I wanted to ask you, first of all, do you remember the moment that they, you know, called your name as, as a nominee? Take us back to that moment if you remember it. And then also, now that we have some distance from, you know, from the season and the kind of um, the excitement, you know, what does that recognition mean to you at this point in your career and for this role in particular? Oh gosh. Um, yeah, I do. I, well, they, I don't know that they read my category on the live stream, right. but I did get a call, um, letting me know. And it was just a great, it was a great, lovely, wonderful moment. Um, we all in the art, we have a group chat of all the, um, cast and we were just, you know, FaceTiming and celebrating. I mean, it's wonderful. It's, it's, just it was euphoric and and really for me like i my number one concern is just honoring their work you know making Paulucia and jen proud of of me and of the show and giving them what they envisioned and so um and you know doing whatever i can for for them um and so this, it just felt like, okay, this is, I was like, I wanted to like bring it to them. You know, I was like, look, this is like, you know, uh, for you, <laughs> I'm so codependent, but um, yeah, it, it just was like uh, a wonderful moment for that, for that um, reason. And the recognition is like something I was not expecting at all. And I, something I cherish. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, no question. And so well deserved. Um, Hannah Einbinder, congratulations on the second season of Hacks. And thanks so much for talking to Gold Derby today. Thanks. Thanks, David. Appreciate it.